One of the uses for the RX bridge is to measure the impedance of an antenna. Most antennas are located on top of masts or outside and it is inconvenient to measure the impedance directly at the terminals of the antenna. What we can do is place the RX bridge at the near end of the cable in the shack and take some readings. First off, some important consideration. If the antenna is 50 ohm resistive and the cable is 50 ohms, then it doesn't matter how long the cable is, the RX bridge should read 50 ohms at the near end of the cable. Also, if the cable is a half wavelength long at the frequency you're measuring the antenna impedance at, or multiples of a half wavelength long, then the antenna impedance should be repeated at the near end of the cable and that's what the bridge should see. If the antenna is not 50 ohms resistive and has some reactive component and the cable is not an exact half wavelength long, then the introduction of the cable between the antenna and the bridge causes the readings to be different. We can use the transmission line equations correct for those differences. I have a setup here which illustrates the use of the RX run bridge to measure the impedance at the near end of a cable with an unknown resistance or antenna at the other end. I have approximately 36 meters of cable on the workbench here and I have a termination on the far end which is a carbon trim pot 100 ohms. That will be my antenna simulator. I have chosen a resistor simply because it's easier to measure the value of resistance accurately with a digital multimeter. However, most antennas will also have some reactance and to, to make the simulation realistic, one would need to include a coil or a capacitor. Just to save time and for the purposes of illustration, I'll just use the resistor. Before I proceed, I'm just going to check the bridge with a 50 ohm termination on the Z unknown connector, just to make sure that the dials are reading correctly. I've set the receiver at uh, 10 megahertz which is the frequency I'm going to test the cable at. Well that looks pretty good, so we're happy with the dial readings. My first test is to set the trim pot at 50 ohms. And there it is, 50.7. The probe's around about 0.6 of an ohm. Now we'll switch on the receiver and just see what the readings are. We'll, uh, the dial's there, and it should be 50 ohms of course. Looks like 50 ohms, and the reactance is zero. I have now set the trim pot at 25 ohms to simulate a 25 ohm antenna. The probes are around about 0.6 of an ohm, so that's close enough to 50 ohms. We'll switch on the receiver, and we'll go down to the RX bridge and see what the readings are. Well that looks like about 70 ohms resistive and around about 550 picofarads capacitive. The 550 picofarads read on the dial can be converted to a reactance either using the spreadsheets or the chart on the top of the bridge. We will now repeat the same test with the trim pot set to 75 ohms. That's close enough. Go in on the dials and see what we've got now. Resistance nulls there. And I'll just wind the receiver up so we can have a bit more noise. That looks like around about 36 ohms. And that looks like about a reading of 10 on the inductive side of the bridge. That reading can be converted to a reactance again using the spreadsheets or the chart on the front of the bridge. Here I've written down the two measurement results. For case 1, trim pot set at 25 ohms. Case 2, trim pot set at 75 ohms. So we'll now take these readings and enter them into the computer spreadsheet. I have here on the computer screen the RX1 spreadsheets. The first thing we'll do is just check the, uh, the reading of the capacitive uh, reactants that we got. Frequency 10 megahertz, 550 pf, and the result is 28.94 ohms. So we'll take note of that. The next reading we took was with the 75 ohm trim pot and the reactance reading was 10 at 10 megahertz and we find that the inductive reactance is 10.2 ohms. So having written those figures down we will now go to the last spreadsheet which enables us to find out what the 
actual impedances at the other end of the cable, that is, what the actual trimpot settings were. Frequency is 10 MHz. Now the cable is 35.77 meters long. I've measured that using the bridge as accurately as I could. Velocity factor 0.66 and the uh, resistance of the cable is 50 ohms. So we'll enter our um, first reading which was 70 ohms for the 25 ohm case and minus 28.94 ohms for the reactants and click on the spreadsheet and the resulting um, calculation tells us that we have 27.82 ohms and plus 0.05 which is virtually nothing of reactants. So that's pretty close to 25 ohms. Okay. We'll now enter the uh, second set of readings for the 75 ohm trim pot case. I'll just move the camera over there. Again the same frequency. In this case we had 36 ohms. So there's quite a difference there. 36 ohms is what we actually read at this end of the cable and this time it's plus 10.2 ohms. So we click on the resulting calculations cell here which is over here and we find it's 74.99 ohms resistance and minus 0.66. So that's pretty good. Please note that this particular spreadsheet uses the transmission line equations for a lossless line and no reactive component. There are transmission line calculators on the web which also include the losses and the reactive component of the cable. You could of course modify these equations to add those but uh, I haven't found it necessary for the type of measurements I've been doing. And as you can see from the results, it's close enough for uh, amateur purposes.